people. Welcome to the Back to Basics Ministries online church where we stand in the gap for many people. Standing in the gap means we are here for you until God shows you somewhere else to go. If you don't have a church to attend, we want you to come and be a part of this ministry. And even if it's temporary, even if it's for one Sunday, plug in so that you get the word of God, so that you get enough to keep on going on. We thank God. We're standing in the gap for this nation and for the nations. Did you know that about 80% of this nation does not go to church? I've been using the the percentage 69% in past weeks, but someone pulled my coat this week and said, no, no, no. The recent, most recent statistics say that 80% of Americans do not attend church. Ladies and gentlemen, that is scary. 80% of people do not attend church. And so we want to let you know that the online church is out here for you. We're here for you, that you can hear the word of God, that you can worship God. Oh, it's different. We don't have a choir. We don't have a band. We don't have a praise and worship team. And we don't even have offerings. We don't do this and we don't, but we do worship God and we preach the word of God. And it is the word of God that is going to sustain people. The word of God is going to take you from where you are to where you ought to be. So I just praise God. I, I look at my, my children have just come online, praise God, boom, boom, one after the other. I thank God for all of you attending the worship where I am church, the Back to Basics online church. I praise God. I looked on Facebook this morning and one of my friends in Indiana said, she's got such neck pain and aching all over her body that she she uh, uh, wants to know uh, if she can, she wants prayer to go to church. I wrote back to her. I said, no, stay home and attend the worship where I am church, the online church. Why press and, and uh, subject yourself to the flu and to more elements and to more sickness? Stay home and get your blessing at home. That makes sense to me. Praise God. Hallelujah. So we welcome you this morning at the Back to Basics online church where people worldwide, all over America, all over Canada, all over Europe, all over Asia and Africa are attending this church, ladies and gentlemen. This thing is not being done in a corner. The Holy Spirit is touching people all over the world. And God is not too busy that he does not want to come by and bless you too. So good morning. Uh, we praise God. We thank God for you. I see my friend Matt Borland is with us today. Matt, man, I'm so glad to see you on with us today. I've been praying for you, and I was uh, asking the Lord this morning to bring you online because we miss you, man. We miss Matt Borland. Praise God. I call Matt Borland my assistant pastor. He lives up in Erie, Pennsylvania. He's my assistant pastor. And when I don't hear from him, man, I get kind of worried, man. I get kind of shaky. Matt, I get the jitters, man. I get I get uh, the DTs, man. So I'm so glad you're here. And uh, praise God. Matt, God bless you and your family. And I thank God for all of you. I'm so, I get happy. I get excited when I see my children coming online from Pennsylvania and New Jersey. And it, it excites me to see Tammy Nichols come on from Ohio and Jen Ryder from uh, Maryland and Bishop Elijah and all of our people in Kenya and they come online and our friend um, uh, our friend uh, brother Carter his name is Carter also lives in Dubai and he comes on live and our friend Andrew McBride Dr. McBride in Connecticut this is a nationwide worldwide ministry and so we praise God and we bless God that people get the video later this day or even the next day and our videos are archived so that people can get these powerful life changing messages. Ladies and gentlemen, we're living in difficult times and God wants you to know that he's right here with you. He's here for you. Things are not going to get easier 
or better, but God's going to take care of you. So we want you to pay attention to this message today. And we've got a great message. I believe that the message today is going to bless people all over the world. We have a message, how to deal with frustration, how to deal with frustration. And uh, I think this is going to bless every one of us. So we praise God. We're going to ask Matt Borland. Matt, can you come on and lead us in prayer? Matt, are you still there? No, I can't hear you, Matt. We're going to wait just a moment. I hope Matt can come on and lead us in prayer. Matt is such a precious brother, and we thank God for him. Okay. Well, we can't hear you, Matt, so I'm going to pray, and maybe you can close us out later on. <clears throat> thank you. We Once you find out what that glitch is, Father God, we thank you, and we bless you, we praise you, we honor you, we worship you, God. We worship the living God. No, we're not in a brick and mortar church. No, we're not at First Baptist. We're not at Second Pentecostal. We're not at Third Presbyterian, but we are here in your presence. You said wherever two or more are gathered in your name, Lord, there you are in the midst of us. And so we thank you that as we gather from Pennsylvania, from New Jersey, from Ohio, from Kenya, from uh, uh Asia, from South America, from parts of the West Coast of the United States, from uh, North America, South America, Central America. And as we gather, we thank you that you're in the midst of us and we worship you and we give you the praise. We thank you, Lord, for the Back to Basics Ministries online church. We thank you that you are present with us. And Lord, we know that many would like to attend uh, church fellowships to fellowship with others, but we just thank you that you have us here today. And so, Father, we ask in the name of Jesus that, first of all, you forgive us of our sins. All of us have sinned and come short of your glory. So forgive us, Father, we pray. Then, Lord God, we ask in Jesus' name that you bless us, that you help us to hear your word. Holy Spirit, help us to hear the word of God. Feed us with the bread from heaven. And we thank you, Father. We bless you. We praise you, Lord God, in Jesus' mighty name. And Lord, we ask that you bless the Facebook, live Facebook audience, God, that you'll bless them. And we thank you for bringing people live to this service via Facebook. So we praise you. and Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, we're going to deal with this question today. This question how to deal with frustration, how to deal with frustration. Everybody's frustrated. Man, I'll tell you, there, have you ever had a morning, and those of you in the chat window, uh, if you if you agree with this, give me an amen or give me a, a, a thumbs up. Have you ever awakened in the morning and you, you, you look up and you say, oh man, uh, no, no, not today, and just roll back over? And and yes, yes, and roll right back over. Or uh, as soon as you get up and and after you've done your devotions, or maybe you turn on the TV first to see what's in the news, and you say, "Oh no, not the same old, same old, not the same old political rhetoric, not the same old political garbage." I'm sick and tired of it. I'm sick and tired of CNN. I'm sick and tired of. Of, 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 of uh, Fox News. I'm sick and tired of the same old setup, the same old setup. They bring somebody on, they speak about the issue, then they they carefully pick and choose the people they want to spin their twist, and then they have a so-called dialogue. I get sick and tired of it. I get sick and tired of all that mainstream media hype and uh, the the fake news and the no facts and the uh, predictions and the speculations and I mean just grieves my spirit and so I mean that's called frustration, ladies and gentlemen. So I know <clears throat> there are others of you 
you wake up and your body's still aching. Your body's still in pain. Some of you have the flu. Some of you are not doing too well. Some of you have family members. You have prayed and you have prayed and you have prayed and prayed for them. And still, they seem like they're not getting better. That's called frustration. Everybody's frustrated. And now, now, look, 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 ladies, ladies, if your husband's listening in, be kind, be kind, because I'm going to say this. Be kind. If your husband listening in right now, be kind. Ladies, have you ever awakened in the morning and look across the bed and look and see that head, that face on the on the other pillow and say, oh, no, not another day with ladies and gentlemen. Don't put anything in the chat window because your husband might uh, try to get this chat record uh, or, or, or wives uh, or husbands or you look across and say, oh, man. Uh, I'm still married to this chick. She's still alive. She's still here. Ladies and gentlemen, that's called frustration. It's called frustration. And and, and also, if you think that way about your spouse, you need to repent. You need to just repent. Praise God. You need to repent. I know when Jackie gets home today, she's going to say, hmm, so that's what you think about me in the morning. No, Jackie, no. All contraire. All contraire. I'm talking about those out in the audience Jackie, I'm talking about other people. I'm not talking about you. Praise God. But everybody's uh, dealing with frustration, and frustration is a major issue in the lives of all people. What is frustration? Frustration is, according to the dictionary, whatever prevents you from accomplishing a purpose or fulfilling a desire. Whatever prevents you, whatever blocks you, whatever grieves you, whatever thwarts you, whatever hinders you from accomplishing a purpose or a goal and a desire. Frustration causes feelings of discouragement or bafflement. To frustrate means <clears throat> to make something invalid or to nullify. Frustration is something that defeats your accomplishments or makes them ineffective. Frustration means barriers are placed in front of your goals and you cannot accomplish them. Frustration means you're grieved because you can't accomplish what you desire. Some of you have, have, have had goals and you're working towards those goals and you get frustrated. I know some of you have goals in mind and it seems like as soon as you get close to that goal, boom, up pops another issue, up pops another channel uh, challenge. Yes, that is frustrating. That is very frustrating. So we're going to deal with how to deal with frustration today. We're going to take a good look at frustration. Ladies and gentlemen, frustration can be good. There are times when frustration can be good. And the Lord put in my spirit this morning, uh, soon I'll be preaching a message. And this message is going to bless married couples. And this message, uh, I'm going to preach a message soon about how to get your loved one delivered, how to get a loved one delivered. You, if you've got a husband, you know your husband's cheating on you and you want to do something about that, please somebody mute your phone, mute your phone. If you've got a husband, you know he's cheating on you, you know he ain't doing right. There is a way that you can frustrate him that he will repent and return to doing what he ought to be doing. God's put in my, in my spirit to minister to, to this in a very short while. I'll be preaching and ministering on how to rescue a loved one, how to get a loved one set free from bondage. If you know your wife cheating on you when you go to work, uh, there is something you can do, ladies and gentlemen. No, not throwing uh, grit, hot grits and gravy in her face. No, not uh, 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 introducing her to the baseball bat. No, not pumping her with a, your, your, your 45. No, no, there's a better way to see her soul is important. God can get her soul set free so that she can get saved and heal your marriage. So we're going to deal with that kind of frustration in a short while. And that's going to be powerful. Ladies and gentlemen, if you've got a child, a hard-headed, stubborn, stiff-necked child, who won't obey you, wants to do things his or her way, eating out of your refrigerator, sleeping in your bed, uh, cussing you out, uh, bad-mouthing you, embarrassing the household. There is something 
you can do. Should have been done a long time ago, but it's not too late. If you've got a child, he's 46 years old, uh, living off your social security check and, and, and pushing you around, beating up on you, there is something you can do, ladies and gentlemen. So we're going to be talking about this in a short while. But until then, we want to deal, look at uh, issues that you have uh, pending you right now, such as this flu epidemic. A lot of people are suffering from the flu and are frustrated. Uh, you got sick and seems like this flu seems like it's taking a long time to pass through. Well, there's something you can do. There's something you can do. I tell, I told my daughter on the phone the other day, get you some silver biotics. I told Tammy Nichols late, last week, buy some silver biotics. Jen Ryder uses silver biotics. Silver biotics uh, twice a day, two spoonfuls a day. I haven't had the flu, praise God, in three years, ladies and gentlemen, because of, I'm taking silver biotics, but I know that God has built a hedge around me also. So there are things that you can do. There, uh, Some of you are frustrated because you can't get a job. You're waiting on a job. You've prayed, you've prayed, you've fasted, you've prayed, you've turned your plate down. Some of you have sickness in your body. You've prayed, you've prayed, you're fasting and you're praying, and Satan wants you to think something's wrong with you. Well, there's nothing wrong with you. God has his season, ladies and gentlemen. He's got his season. So we want to tell you today what you can do and how you can get the victory. The victory, ladies and gentlemen. We're talking about the victory. Some of you want to see your ministry launch forth. Some of you want to get out there and be doing ministry. And as soon as you start out, Satan hits you, boom, boom, boom. Hits you with your household. Somebody in your household uh, messes with you. Somebody in your household messes up. Your household embarrasses you. Uh, there is something you can do to overcome frustration. We're talking about a real demonic spirit called frustration that Satan uses to keep you paralyzed, to keep you from doing the will of God. And Satan loves to frustrate. He loves to discourage. He loves to grieve. He loves to hinder. He loves to thwart. But the God we serve, hallelujah, he's a mighty God. Can I get a witness for out there? The God we serve is a mighty God. And so here on the Back to Basics online church, we represent Jesus Christ. We present Jesus Christ uh, crucified, buried, risen from the dead, and we're not ashamed. Hallelujah. We are not ashamed of the gospel. We're not ashamed to tell people, no matter how frustrated they become, no matter how frustrated we become, we're not ashamed to let people know that Jesus Christ is the living God, and Jesus Christ has the answer, and we need to tell people Jesus Christ cares about you. There is no problem. He cannot solve. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Sound like I'm preaching that Jesus Christ will never leave you, nor will he forsake you. And we need to encourage people. We need to encourage people. Then, ladies and gentlemen, we need to be like King David. We need to encourage ourselves in the Lord. David came home one day and his wife, two wives and, and his Armies, wives, and children have been captured by the Amalekites. David was so frustrated, even his best soldiers threatened to kill him. They wanted to stone him to death. And uh, we find in the scripture, 1 Samuel 31, that David encouraged himself in the Lord. Ladies and gentlemen, learn how to encourage yourself in the Lord, because there may not always be a preacher to help you. There may not always be a brick and mortar church. There may not always be uh, a word from God. There may not always be uh, uh, an online church. You might have to walk through the valley of the shadow of death, but you need to know that you're never alone. Jesus promised never to leave us, never to leave us alone. So learn how to encourage yourself in the Lord. Build up your faith. Build up your holy faith. Get filled. Get baptized with the Holy Ghost. Learn how to pray in tongues. Learn how when frustration hits you and you want to cave in, you want to give up, 
Learn the secret of praying in tongues until you get the victory. Ladies and gentlemen, we're talking about how God's people can stay on the top side, not on the bottom side. You're the head, not the tail. We're talking about learning a way to stay on the top even though if your mama quits Jesus, if your daddy quits Jesus, if your children quit Jesus, if your husband quits Jesus, if your wife quits Jesus, you've got to learn how to go on. Come on, somebody. You've got to know know how to go on and on because the day is coming, ladies and gentlemen, when we must stand before the most high king and give an account of the life that he gave to us. And if you stand before Jesus and Jesus says, why did you quit me? And you say, well, because they fired me from my job. That's a weak excuse, ladies and gentlemen. That's a weak excuse. Or if you stand before Jesus and 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 God says, why did you give up on me? Why did you quit uh, following me? And you say, because my husband found him a girlfriend uh, in another town, in a nearby town. That's a weak excuse. Jesus is going to say, depart from me. I never knew you. Ladies and gentlemen, the scripture says in the, I feel fired up today. Tammy Nichols, I feel fired up today. The scripture says in Romans, thou art inexcusable, O man. There will be no excuse. No excuse will be accepted when you stand before the Lord. And so we've got to learn how to deal with uh, frustration. We've got to learn how to encourage ourselves in the Lord. We've got to learn how to keep on keeping on. We've got to learn that if the whole world turns against Jesus, we've got to keep on uh, praising the Lord. If your best friends leave Jesus, you've got to keep on. If your husband leaves Jesus and walks out of the house, you've got to learn how to survive. Come on, somebody. We're talking about how to deal with frustration. Frustration is real. Frustration is, is painful. It hurts. I've been frustrated many times. Frustration is designed to make you give up, to make you quit. Frustration is designed to make you put that gun to your head and pull the trigger. Frustration is made meant to make you drink that poison. Frustration is meant to uh, uh, encourage you to jump in front of a train. Frustration is meant uh, uh, is designed to get you to jump out of an automobile on the interstate. But I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, you don't have to yield to frustration. You can get the victory. God says you can get the victory. So listen, listen, hang in there. Don't change channels. Don't go to another channel. Stay with me and hear the rest of this message. We're only going to be a few more minutes. Frustration is designed to take you out to separate you from the love of God. Frustration is designed to get you to stop thinking the thoughts of God, to stop thinking the word of God, to stop meditating on the word of God, to stop fellowshipping with others. Frustration is meant to try to separate you from other believers. Already we see that 80% of this nation, that's a large percentage, ladies and gentlemen, a large percentage of this nation are separated from the church. Ladies and gentlemen, we're not going to blame all this on Satan. A lot of it is the church's fault. A lot of churches are not doing the will of God. A lot of churches have started doing their own thing, but we're not going to point the finger. I'm just giving you the statistics. 80% of Americans do not attend church, and that's frustrating. It's frustrating for us preachers to know that as hard as we preach, people still don't want to worship God. But I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, uh, God said for me not to worry about those who are not listening. Preach the word. Preach the word. I'll preach the word. The Holy Ghost will do the work. You preach the word. You keep on witnessing. Tammy Nichols, you keep on witnessing. Matt, you keep on with witnessing. Jen Ryder, you keep on witnessing. Keep on praying. Keep on fasting. Keep on laying hands on the sick. Keep on living an example. Even though, even in your household, you get painful experiences. You get painful repercussions from your own family. But don't give up. Don't quit. Don't you dare quit. I'm glad to see Debbie Ledbetter come on right now. Praise God. We believe God to heal that loved one. We believe God, Debbie, to heal your loved one. We thank you that you've just come on. We believe God to heal your loved one. We've been praying for you. We've been praying for you. Praise God. So don't you give up. Don't you quit. 
Don't you quit because you prayed once. You prayed once. Yes, everybody, please mute your phones. You prayed once and nothing happened. Pray again. Pray again. Elijah told his servant when he declared that rain is going to rain. He said, Ahab, get down off this mountain. It's going to rain. Elijah said to his servant, go and look at the ocean. Is there a cloud in the sky? The servant came back the first time. There's no cloud. Elijah said, go back. Elijah started praying that it would rain. Ladies and gentlemen, it had not rained in three years. Elijah declared three years ago it would not rain, and it wouldn't rain for three years. And so Elijah told his servant, go back and look at the ocean. Is there any, any cloud over the ocean? The second time the servant came back, no, master, no cloud. Elijah declared it will rain, and he began praying, praying. You've got to learn how to touch heaven, ladies and gentlemen. When you're frustrated, you've got to learn how to dig deeper and touch heaven. You've got to learn how to pray in tongues. You've got to learn how to pray. You've got to pray without ceasing. You've got to learn how to ignore all those people who who, who want to go to the bowling alley, who want to go to the chitlin cook-off, uh, the, the, the fried chicken uh, cook-off, the collard greens cook-off. You've got to turn down your plate. You've got to sacrifice some of the pleasures of life because when you seek the Lord, you've got to seek him with all your heart and you can't go halfway. God is waiting for those who are willing to come all the way. The eyes of the Lord are running to and fro throughout the whole earth, seeking to prove himself strong on the behalf of them whose hearts are perfect towards him. So don't quit. Elijah's servant came back the second time. No cloud. Go back. Go back and look again. Elijah kept on praying the third time. No cloud. The fourth time, no cloud. The fifth time, no cloud. Now, by this time, Gehazi, the servant, was probably getting a little bit frustrated. He was probably saying, my master done lost his mind. He's praying for rain, and the sun is shining. He sent me back to look at the ocean for five times. I don't see anything. He sends him the sixth time. I don't see anything. Well, go back. Elijah said, go back. Ladies and gentlemen, some of you, come on, somebody. You need to go back. You need to go back. I declare in the name of Jesus, you quit on Jesus after that prayer, second fasting. You quit on Jesus after you fasted the third time. You still don't have your healing. You still got cancer in your body. Your son's still out there selling dope. Your daughter's still sick. Your husband's still cheating on you. You still have this growth in your stomach. You still have this pain in your head. You've got to learn how to go back, ladies and gentlemen, and keep on pressing in. God is not a man that he should lie, ladies and gentlemen. So Elijah told his servant after praying six times, he said, he said to him, go back one more time. Come on, somebody. I feel somebody getting help today. I feel somebody getting help today. Debbie Ledbetter, I feel somebody getting help today. It didn't happen last week. It didn't happen yesterday. You prayed. You fasted. You attended a prayer band. Your prayer warriors met with you. It still didn't happen, but go back one more time. I hear the Holy Spirit saying to somebody today, go back one more time. Go back one more time. Elijah's servant went back one more time. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Elijah's servant went back one more time and he looked out over the ocean and he saw a little dark cloud about the size of a man's hand. He saw rising from the ocean a little dark cloud. Ladies and gentlemen, it had not rained for three years. Elijah declared that it would rain. And so the servant ran back to Elijah and said, Master, Master, I see a cloud. Master, I see a cloud. It's the size of a man's hand. I see a cloud. Elijah said, get thee down. Go tell Ahab. Run and tell King Ahab, get off this mountain. Get off this mountain. It's going to rain. It hasn't rained for three years, but it's going to rain. Some of you need to go back. Go back to God. Go back to him one more time. Go back to church one more time. Don't give up on the church. Go back to Jesus one more time. 
Oh, I feel the anointing. I feel God's breaking the chain in somebody's life today. I feel God is setting somebody free. Go back. Go back to your wife. Go back to your husband. Go back home, child. Go back one more time. Try it one more time. Go back to God one more time. Oh, hallelujah. The Bible says that Ahab started down the mountain in his chariot and it started raining. It had not rained for three years, but the prophet of God prayed the rain in and God heard the prayers and Ahab started running it, riding in his chariot. The Bible says that Elijah started running. They were 18 miles out of town. And Elijah, old man Elijah, the old prophet with the rheumatism, with the arthritis, with the headaches, with, with the body aches, with the flu. He started running, ladies and gentlemen, and he caught up with Ahab's chariot on foot. He ran past Ahab and beat Ahab into the town. And he declared to the people, it's raining, it's raining, it's raining. It's raining. Ladies and gentlemen, I know some of you are frustrated, but don't be so frustrated that you're blinded to the holiness of God. Don't be so frustrated that you're blinded to the goodness of God. Don't be so frustrated that you cannot see what God is trying to do. Jesus said, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in and sup with him and he with me. He's not giving up on you, ladies and gentlemen. You might have given up on yourself, and if you've done so, repent. Confess your sins. Confess your sins, and tell the Lord, Lord God, I'm sorry for sinning. Lord, I'm coming back to you. I'm coming back to you. Facebook family, tell the Lord, Lord, I, re I sinned against you. I turned my back on you. I stopped going to church. I stopped worshiping you. I stopped studying the word. I stopped praying. Lord, I'm coming back and get back. Get back up, ladies and gentlemen. Get back up. Ladies and gentlemen, I've suffered frustration many times in my life, but I know the power of God. I know the power of God. God said, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. God said in Jeremiah 3, 3, call unto me and I will answer thee. I will show you great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Isaiah said, wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. He shall strengthen thine heart. David said, I waited patiently on the Lord, and he inclined unto me and heard my cry. He brought me up out of a horrible pit. Habakkuk said, I'm going to sit in my watchtower, and I'm going to watch to see what the Lord will say to me when I'm reproved. Hosea said, though the fig tree may not blossom, though there not be any sheep in the stalls, the Lord is in his holy temple. Ladies and gentlemen, God has not forgotten you. I want to say to all my friends over in Africa, God has not forgotten you. I want to say to my friends in Asia, God has not forgotten you. I want to say to my friends in Europe and in Latin America, God has not forgotten you. And all over this nation, as you watch and, and suffer, and experience frustration daily because of this, the filthy politics in this nation. God has not forgotten you, America. Repent, repent, and call upon the name of the Lord. Repent, repent, and call upon the name of the Lord. Ladies and gentlemen, we're talking about how to deal with frustration. How to deal with frustration. Make sure that your motives are pure. Make sure that your motives are pure. Now, there's a flip side to this. If you're frustrated because you're trying to do something wrong and it ain't working for you, it ain't going to work. I say it ain't going to work. If you're frustrated because you can't hit on your neighbor's wife and you've tried everything you could, you, you pay the hotel bill and you arrange for the room and all of that and, and, and she didn't show up and you're sitting there with a box of candy and, and, and a, 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 some flowers and she didn't show up. Ladies and gentlemen, that kind of stuff won't work. Uh, you might have even prayed that you score. No, 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 no. God will put a roadblock in your life, ladies and gentlemen. 
If it's not of God, if it's not right, don't pray for it. Don't pray for it. There is good frustration. We're going to talk about good frustration at a later time, uh, maybe next week. Who knows? Uh, but we're going to talk about good frustration and how you can get your loved one set free, how you can get the right motive, how you can get your uh, thoughts pure, how you can get that uh, ungodliness, that lust, uh, that pride out of your heart. Ladies and gentlemen, a lot of people are frustrated because they've got pride in their heart. They've got goals in their heart that are not of God. And if that's your case, then you've got to seek the Lord and repent. Get those idols out of your life. Get those idols out of your life. Set your affections on the Lord Jesus Christ. And for those of you who are not born again, you need to be born again. Some of you are having problems because you're not born again. You're stubbornly resisting the Holy Spirit. The Bible says, grieve not the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit's knocking on your door, telling you, give your life to Jesus. Give your heart to Jesus. It's not about returning to church. It's not about church attendance. It's having a relationship with Jesus, having a relationship with Jesus. Give your heart to Jesus and watch what he will do. Repent of your sins. Turn from your sins and call upon the name of the Lord. God said, call unto me and I will answer thee. I will show you great and mighty things which thou knowest not. I hope this message has helped you today. Hope this message has helped you. How do you deal with frustration? Let me give you a few pointers. Number one, keep on trusting in the Lord. No matter how hard the frustration no matter how overwhelming the problem may be, keep on trusting in the Lord. Number two, keep on obeying the Lord. Keep on obeying the Lord, for obedience is better than sacrifice. Number three, keep on studying and doing the Word of God. I say keep on studying and doing the Word of God. Number four, how to overcome frustration. Keep on praying. Keep on praying. I'm not praying. I'm not saying pray. Now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. But call upon the name of the Lord. Open your heart to him. Open your heart. And as you pray, humble yourself and quiet yourself and let God speak to you. Let him speak to you. He will show you the way. He will tell you this is the way. Walk in it. He will show you the way out of your situation. Number five, keep on praising and worshiping God. Keep on praising and worshiping God. No matter what, you may get a report from the doctor. It may be a bad report, but don't be frustrated. God is the miracle worker. He is the miracle worker. He still knocks on doors at the midnight hour. He still ushers thieves to paradise. He still saves people. He heals it, there's no time limit on God. So keep on trusting him and waiting on him. Wait on the Lord. That last one, wait on the Lord. Wait on him. Wait on him. Wait on him. Make up your mind. You're going to wait on the Lord. Wake up your mind. Make up your mind. Yes, wake up your mind too. Make up your mind that you're going to wait on the Lord. No matter how difficult it might, might be, you might pray for your husband to stop committing adultery and he gets a, a second woman he's running with. But you keep on, keep on, keeping on. We're going to minister on this soon. You keep on, keeping on and watch what the Lord will do. Watch what the, you'll have to build another room on the house for the flowers and the candy and the silver and the gold and the gifts and the love and, and the, the dinner tickets and the, uh, uh, the trophies that you're going to get. So wait on the Lord. God is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Praise God. And then God told me to tell you, he told me this morning, as I was in morning prayer, he said, tell the people. He said, be sure to tell the people, victory is coming. <laughs> Woo! God said, victory is coming. Jen Ryder, victory is coming. No matter what they say about you, victory is coming. My friends, victory is coming. 
All over Africa, victory's coming. All over Europe, victory's coming. All over Asia, victory's coming. All over America, victory's coming. From the White House to my house and your house, victory is coming. Victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory today is mine. I told Satan, get thee behind me. Victory today is mine. Joy is mine. Joy is mine. Joy today is mine. I told Satan, get thee behind me. Joy today is mine. And happiness is mine. Happiness is mine. Happiness today is mine and yours too. I told Satan, get thee behind me. Happiness today is mine. Ladies and gentlemen, don't you let nobody turn you around. I know that's a double negative. Don't you let nobody turn you around. Don't let anything turn you around. Oh, what does it profit a man if he gain the whole world and lose his own soul? You all get back in church. Get on the an anointed pastor, an anointed preacher. Get it back in fellowship. Get back in prayer service. Get back in studying the word of God. Get back in corporate worship. Get back in uh, worshiping God in your home. And when you go out to church, go to a place where they worship the Lord. Ladies and gentlemen, selling chicken dinners is fine. Selling chitlin dinners is fine if you like chitlin. Selling collard greens is fine. Having Valentine's Day teas is fine. Everybody's birthday party, that's fine. Cake walks are fine. But ladies and gentlemen, none of that can get you into heaven. Come on, somebody. You must be born again. You must be born again. God's word said any man or woman who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is not fit for the kingdom. If you've turned back, you've quit on Jesus, you've got time to repent today. You've got time to repent today and get back up where you belong and trust the Lord to build you up, to build you up in the most Holy Ghost. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Pastor Leroy Carter, the Back to Basics online church, the church where people's lives are being changed by the Holy Spirit. I want to extend to you at this time the opportunity to get saved. If you're not saved, pray this prayer with me. And if you are saved, pray it anyway. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I believe with my whole heart that Jesus Christ is your son. I believe he died on the cross for my sins. I believe he was buried and he raised himself from the dead on the third day. I believe he ascended into heaven. I believe he sits at the right hand of the throne of God. I believe Jesus is coming back again. I receive Jesus Christ as my savior. Lord God, I receive Jesus and I thank you for the gift of salvation. Now, Lord, guide me, <clears throat> show me to a church where I can receive the word of God and learn how to fellowship with you, with you and worship you. Surround me with like-minded people who love you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Well, bless God, bless God. That's a prayer for people to get saved. And if you're saved already, you're backslidden, you need to get back into fellowship with God, just repent today. Repent today. Say, God, I'm sorry for turning my back on you. God, plant me in a church where I can worship you. And Lord God, receive me just as I am. Help me to study. Or give me the right attitude, the right mind. Create in me a clean heart, God. Lord God, I, I need you. I cannot make it without you. And praise God. We want you, uh, if you can, stick with the uh, Worship Where I Am Church. This uh, back to basics online church but if god sends you to another place you go be quick to go be quick to obey god this is pastor leroy carter and um we want to uh sign off right now with our facebook family and facebook family uh, i want to say you can call me contact me anytime you want anytime you want on facebook or at leroy carter 69 at yahoo.com or call me 404-205-1101 and I'll be glad to talk with you, be glad to share with you and to our go to meet me family and the, and the family watching these videos, send me an email or um, give me a call. I'll be glad to share with you. Praise God.
Praise God. Tammy Nichols says, tell us about your new book. Okay, Tammy, I'm going to talk about the new book next week. I'll uh, tell you about the new book next week. I have two new books coming out in February. One is Understanding the Bible, this great textbook we're using, all Bagley School. Of my new book, Black Heroes of the Bible, as we celebrate Black History Month next week. Praise God. And so we bless God. We thank God. And we praise God. See you, Facebook family. Um, go to Meet Me Family. We're going to start the recording, but we will leave the opportunity available that you can unmute your phones and, and let's share. Let's talk together. Uh, please uh, share what's on your heart. Okay, we have stopped.